Hello, hello, this is La Yosh. Welcome back to Life Study Library. Today will be a good day for those of you who easily get their memory confused. Imagine a scenario like this. You and your friend are talking about the dinner you guys had last night at a burger place. You say to your friend, you should have tried that amazing cheeseburger I picked for dinner last night. It was so juicy and the bun was at the right spot of softness and crunchiness. It was fabulous. My mouth was watering even before I had my first bite. And then your friend looks at you weird and says this. I don't know what you're talking about. I ordered the cheeseburger and you ate the bacon burger. You are stunned. And then you realize, oh yeah, I did actually have a bacon burger. How did I not remember that correctly? Your friend laughs at you and jokingly points out, careful now, you don't want to be studying in pedal dementia so soon. Scenarios like this are awfully common in our lives and we get made fun of for being so forgetful. But what if I told you that scientifically, this is a totally normal and might even be a desirable phenomenon to occur. Likewise, in this channel I'm going to be talking about these interesting scientific and psychological information by implementing data from scientific studies. So if you want to so if you're interested and want to watch more of my past and my future content, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and my videos so that you can keep up with my content and so that you can support me. Thank you very much for doing so and now let's continue with the video. So today's study is done at the University of Rochester by the Professor of Brain and Cognitive Science, Robert Jacobs. Professor Jacobs claims that humans have a tendency to misremember detailed information. What do I mean by this? So one example would be visual misinformation. We humans tend to underestimate the speed of a moving object. So if a baseball is thrown at you, you visually feel like the baseball isn't moving as fast as as fast as it actually is. On that split second instant, you feel as if the ball is has has is hovering midair. You might have experienced the scenario in which the baseball seems like it seems like it's hovering midair. This is a visual misinformation. And then the ball hits you and you hurt yourself. The reason why this error exists is simply because the majority of the stuff that we see are not moving so fast. Think about it. You look outside through a window, you notice that the majority of the details in the scenery are either not moving at all or moving really slowly. The trees, the mountains, even people or animals will not be moving fast unless they are running or are moving really close to you. That's why our brain has developed by making these assumptions according to this commonplace principle that most things in life move pretty slowly. And there's the same thing going on with information inconsistency. Now, let's imagine for a second. It would be wonderful if it would be wonderful if all of us had perfect memory and can retain information in a complete state. Something like a photographic memory where we can remember information like a camera. But everyone knows that the great majority of us do not have this ability, and our information retaining ability and overall memory has its limit. This is why our brain finds it inefficient to gather all the necessary information and analyze it through there. Almost no one can do this effectively, so we take the alternative, which is keeping the bare minimum required information and leaving the rest to estimation and prediction from common sense or common knowledge. This behavior is called the heuristic, a quick and dirty way to analyze things through retained information. It is very similar to stereotyping where we use basic categories to group things or people and make decisions or take actions based on that simple arrangement. Because a good chunk of heuristics come from assumptions, it obviously will not be 100% accurate, but it's accurate enough considering the limited amount of information available. You can take away just enough information to make a basic estimate and take actions based on that. And now let's go back to the cheeseburger and bacon burger example that I've talked about in the beginning. What happened here is that because your brain couldn't retain the entire information of what kind of burger you had, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with this. You substituted this information loss with a commonplace principle. In this case, you've substituted by this whole by, by mentioning a common kind of burger, a cheeseburger. And this is a perfect evidence that your brain, among all the limitations it has, is working properly. And Professor Jacobs claims that this is a positive occurrence. I myself am pretty guilty of misremembering details with the, within a certain information. For example, specific information that comes up in a test, like specific detail on a, on a history test. 
It was common for me that there were always more than a few detailed questions that I got wrong because I didn't remember the entire material from word to word. Me and my friends always envied those who seemed to have a photographic memory and had no trouble remembering uh, the every, every single detail on it and wished we had that superhuman ability. However, in reality, having a perfect memory will, will more often than not end up in a disadvantage. People like Dr. Julia Shaw, a psychologist that specializes in false memory, claims that having a word-for-word, letter-for-letter, one-to-one memory is actually a sign of disability. If I remember things correctly, I think she said something along the lines of having a photographic memory is, first of all, a misconception. And the closest thing we get to is a tremendously good but never perfect memory. And it also means that too much of a good memory means you're not able to interpret information by generalizing. This is a problem because our brain functions by generalizing. For example, if there's an immediate threat like a, like a wild animal attacking you, you should, immediately, you should immediately remember that there's a threat in front of you, not the detail of the animal. So once again, interpreting information by using heuristic leads to thriving, or at the very least serves as an evidence that our brain is functioning properly. And having a photographic memory, while it seems like a good thing, is 1. You probably don't have it, and 2. If you do, I'm so sorry. So my overall message to my forgetful friends is to stand tall and straight and don't lose confidence because you forget the details, as, it's, as it is a sign that you are completely normal without any disabilities or disadvantages. I say this and simultaneously it serves as a reassuring message to myself, so yay me, I guess. So that's pretty much it for this video, thank you for watching until the end, and once again, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel, as that will be such a great form of support you can give to me. And like always, my Instagram account for Life Study Library is down in the, de the description along with today's book recommendation. Today's book, you've probably already guessed it, is the one and only, The Memory Illusion, Remembering, Forgetting, and the Science of False Memory by Dr. Julia Shaw. You can jump to the link at the usual place in the, de the, de the description. And I also have a number of other videos you can watch in this channel, so if you're interested, uh, you should go back and check it out. And that's it from me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.